There are more people today praying for Donald Trump than probably ever before. A month before the election, there are more people praying for Donald Trump than ever before. World leaders, both conservative and liberal, both friends of the United States and, and foes, everybody, Vladimir Putin, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, the Italian guy, I forget his name. You've got Congress people and senators on both sides of the aisle. Joe Biden, Joe Biden even praying uh, on Twitter today saying we wish them a recovery. We are praying for the president. Donald Trump is getting prayers from the entire world. Everybody wishing him well publicly. That is something that has got to be driving a lot of people in the Democrat Party totally bonkers today. Because the last thing they want is the world coming together and sympathizing with Donald Trump. The last thing they want is everybody out there going, oh my gosh, the president, you're in our prayers. We wish you the best. These are people who have been wishing the worst on President Trump since day one. And that's why the left is not excited about this or as excited about it as they might think or as you might think. And there are people out there on the left that understand that and they know it and they're panicking. And they're all over Twitter. Somebody named uh, Goodbye45 tweeted, this could help him a lot. All the news will report is this. No more debates. No more white supremacy talk. No more tax stories. Everything will be Trump and coronavirus. Leaves Biden off the news. No more Biden, all Trump. Then Trump can recover and be a hero. This is not what the Democrats want. The Democrats want white supremacy stories. That's why they're out there asking the same question over and over and over again. Tax returns. The New York Times had this bombshell tax return story. Donald Trump only paid $750. Donald Trump only did this. Donald Trump only did that. Gone. Remember the debate? Remember how Donald Trump was so boisterous and bombastic and Donald Trump was the reason the debate was so bad and we have to change all the debate rules. They were, the, the debate commission was like, we have to change the rules. We've got to cut off microphones and we've got to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And Donald Trump is ruining everything. Even Chris Wallace blamed Donald Trump for him being the suckiest moderator to ever moderate a debate. And now the whole world is praying for him. Carol Cudwalladar, who is a British something, I guess she's like a British someone, uh, but she wrote a reminder, because remember, Boris Johnson, not only did Boris Johnson, Prime Minister of Great Britain, not only did he come down with coronavirus, but he was hospitalized, and he was in intensive care, and a lot of people were wondering, oh my God, will he even come out of this? And he did. He came out of it on the other end, and he's and he's back to work, and uh, he's, he's super popular, and she tweeted about that. She wrote a reminder to all a reminder to all Americans that the net effect of our <laughs> prime minister catching COVID-19 was that it prompted a surge of patriotic support from which he emerged with renewed popularity, which enabled him to tear up key functions of the state. Pip, pip. Cheerio. That's basically a concern of the Democrats. Donald Trump getting the sympathy vote, getting the wave of patriotic support. Because think about this. Think about this. Donald Trump has a huge groundswell of support. He's got a huge base. And these are people that go to the rallies. And these are people that buy the signs and wear the MAGA hats. And these are the people that are on Facebook and Twitter every single I mean, we got, we got like, like 6,000 of them watching us right now. And, and they listen to the, to the radio and they're all about the Second Amendment being protected and they're all about the economy being protected and they're all about going back to work and they're all against socialism. They're all against packing the court. They're all against adding different states so the Democrats can take control. They're all against higher taxes. There's a whole groundswell of, I mean, the, the issues have not changed. Donald Trump's stance on the issues has not changed since getting COVID-19. Uh, Joe Biden's have not changed either. I mean, Joe Biden still wants it to be a socialist country. And even though Donald Trump has contracted a virus, he does. He's still of the, of the mindset that the United States of America will never be a socialist country. He is still fighting for law and order. He's still out there saying we need to put these 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 looters and rioters in prison. We've got to protect our statues and our history. We've got to make sure that we come together and not attack each other and protect the American, uh, the American story, even those parts of it were dark. And now, because he has coronavirus, none of that has changed. But the issue is that if you go 
10 days without a rally from the president, 10 days without a press conference from the president, 10 days not knowing what's going to happen from the, with the president. If he goes unseen by his legions of, of supportive fans and voters and his base, if you will, for 10 days and then emerges 100% cured, totally healthy, then the groundswell of patriotic support will be it, it will be incredible. It will be something that they cannot overcome on the left, especially with a candidate like Joe Biden. You think the last rally in Duluth, Minnesota was packed? Wait until the next rally after Donald Trump survives coronavirus. You think the last rally in Duluth, what, had like 30,000 people were in attendance or wanted to attend? You think that was a lot? Wait until Donald Trump emerges on the other side with antibodies and he says, we're going to, let's have a rally in Wisconsin somewhere. You're the entire Midwest is going to come out to show their support. This is horrible news for the Democratic Party. It's not how they wanted it to go. They want Donald Trump in jail. They want Donald Trump out of the Oval Office and in prison. The fact that he's now a patient, the fact that he's now a victim of coronavirus, they are scared witless that he is going to that he is going to garner some kind of sympathy. And the last thing they want is Donald Trump getting sympathy votes this close to the election.